So today we'll be talking about producer surplus and consumer surplus. This video essentially is a follow-up of the video on price ceiling and price load that I had discussed before. I had mentioned there that there are, are certain aspects of the effects of price ceiling and price floor that need a discussion on producer surplus and consumer surplus and also deadweight loss, which I will be covering in a future video so as to uh, have a complete picture of the effects of the said government interventions in the free market, which entails or which uh, expects a better outcome, but there are certain pros and cons to the policy that the government follows in case of price ceiling and price floor. So let's first look at producer surplus. Now we'll be analyzing producer surplus through a diagram. So we take the standard conventional diagram where price is taken on the vertical axis and quantity demanded or supplied rather is taken on the horizontal axis. We have a standard upward rising supply curve and another standard downward sloping demand curve. So uh, the quantity, uh, the free market quantity essentially is OQ star and the free market price charged by the people of the charge by the producers of the market is P star. And let's denote the equilibrium point as E, which stands for equilibrium. So given the supply and the demand of the market, we can, uh, can calculate or we can compute the equilibrium outcome of the market, which is OP star being the price charged and OQ star being the quantity uh, demanded and quantity supplied, which matches uh, in case of a equilibrium market situation. So now what we'll be doing is let's suppose that the price that is being charged by the market is $5 and the quantity demanded as well as supplied is $4. So now we'll be looking at the side of the producers. So consumers were looking at the demand side because consumers demand a particular commodity. What do producers do? Producers supply a particular commodity. So this time we'll be looking at the supply side of the uh, economy and we'll be concentrating on the supply curve. So first we'll be willing to look at the uh, willingness or the expectations of the price. That is something that not and actually does not happen. So as we had started with the willingness to pay for a consumer in case of consumer surplus, we'll here start from the expectation of the producers in the market. So uh, if we have a particular commodity, uh, quantity O Q star equal to two, that is for the second unit of commodity, the height of the blue vertical line denotes the price that the producer expects to receive for the second unit of commodity. So uh, as we know from the law of supply, if the price of a particular commodity increases, the supplier keeps increasing the supply of that particular commodity. So as we move from left to right along the supply curve, the price of that commodity increases, which is why the uh, the producer essentially increases the quantity supplied of that commodity. So for lower units of commodity, the producer was essentially expecting to receive a lower price because the quantity supplied was low. So I expect a lower price. So as we move, uh, as the quantity uh, supplied by the producer increases, the supplier starts to increase its expectation of the price that it receives. So for the second unit of commodity, the producer was willing to expect a particular amount of price for the second unit of commodity. The same can be repeated for different units of commodity, which will give us the price that the producer expects to receive for different units of commodity. As we mentioned before, the price that the producer was willing to uh, or expecting to receive for the first unit is less than the price that the producer expects to receive for the second unit, which is again less than the price that the producer was expecting to receive for the third unit that it supplies. So as the quantity increases, the expectation of the producer is revised every time in the sense that the producer expects a higher price being charged for the particular commodity that it supplies. Now, if that is the case that the producer wanted to happen, what is the actuality? The actuality is again different. The price that the producer actually receives for different units of commodity is more than its expectations. So here you can see the green line, the height of the green line gives the price that the producer actually receives for different units of commodity. So see, for the first unit, the price that the producer was willing to uh, or expecting to receive was the blue smaller height. But the price that the producer actually receives is the longer or rather the uh, higher green line. 
So essentially, it's receiving a lot more than its expectations. The same can be applied for the second and the third unit of commodity. Nonetheless, the excess for the third unit of commodity is less because uh, at this price, uh, at this quantity, the price is also increased. So his expectations were revised up and uh, its surplus is less than. So essentially, the green line shows the price that the producer actually receives for different units of commodity. And the blue line shows the price that the producer expected to receive. So blue denotes expectation, green denotes actuality. Again, we'll look at the difference between the expectation and the actuality. So before that, let's look at the area. So the green area shows the price that the producer actually receives. This is again justified by the fact that, say, suppose I am um, uh, producing a commodity and I charge $5 for every commodity and I uh, sell four units to you. So how much do I earn? Four times five, 20. That's essentially OP star times OQ star, which gives the area of the rectangle. So the shaded portion essentially shows that the it's essentially the price that the producer actually receives from different units of commodity. Now, uh, let's look at the difference again. Price that the producer expects to receive for different units of commodity is given by the blue lines, whereas the price that the producer actually receives for different units of commodity. Here, the expectation is less than the actuality. So essentially, this would have been expressed better if we look at the area. Minus here essentially uh, shows the difference because the expectation will be less than the actuality. So here, if we go strictly by the numerical terms, we'll receive a minus uh, number. But since area can't be minus, essentially what we can do is uh, to ensure that the sign of area remains positive, we can take it the price that the producer actually receives for different units of commodity minus the price that the producer expects to receive for different units of commodity. But since area cannot be negative, we can very well uh, write it in the way that I have expressed. So what that what is that? Essentially, if we look at the price that the producer expects to receive, that is given by the trapezium O, B, E, uh, e Q star, because that is the area under the supply curve up to the equilibrium point. So remember, for consumer surplus, it was area below the demand curve up to the equilibrium point. But for producer surplus, it's the area below the supply curve up till the equilibrium point. For both cases, the second part, that is the up till the equilibrium point, remains the same. But for consumer, consumer's demand. So it's the area below the demand curve. And producers supply a commodity. So for producer surplus, we look at the supply side, which means it's the area below the supply curve. So the price that the producer expects to receive for different units of commodities given by blue lines, which is given by the area of the trapezium O, B, E, Q star. And the price that the producer actually receives for different units of commodities given by the rectangle O, P star, E, Q star. So if I look at the difference between the area O, B, E, Q star and O, P star, E, Q star, it essentially boils down to the area of the triangle B, P star, E, which is the producer surplus. Again, why is it the producer surplus? Because they were willing to, they, they were expecting a lot less from the consumers. They were expecting maybe $2, $3 from the consumers. However, because the market outcome has been uh, determined at point E, where the market price is OP star, they are actually getting more than they more than they expected. So they are actually collecting a surplus from the consumers. So that is why it's called the producer surplus. Now, what is the definition of producer surplus? It is the difference between how much a person would be willing to accept for a, diff for a given quantity of a good versus how much they can receive by selling the good at the market price. So see the, the order is essentially the same. The difference between the expectation and the actuality. For both producer surplus and consumer surplus, essentially it measures the difference between the expectation or the willingness on one hand that is the initial uh, mentality of the producer or the consumer and the actuality, that is the actual market outcome that happens in the market given the demand and supply forces. So the difference of the surplus amount is the benefit that the producer receives for selling the good in the market. Why do producers and seller, producers and consumers enter the market? Because they receive a benefit from it. The sixth uh, principle of um, economics says that markets are usually a good way to organize economic activities. Why? Because they generate a benefit. So producer surplus is the difference 
between how much a person would be willing to accept for a given quantity of a good, which is shown by the blue lines, versus how much they can receive by selling the good at the market price, which is shown by the green shaded portion. The difference or surplus amount is the benefit that the producer receives for selling the good in the market. And this benefit is called the producer surplus. So this is the scenario of a producer surplus.